Happy New Year, kitties. It's Terrible Triple Feature Time once again, and this week we look at 2015, the year of Kurt Russell manliness. I mean, there are so many good movies in 2015 that are, are going to get talked about to death, namely, you know, like uh, Mad Max Fury Road, the new Star Wars movie, whether or not you liked it, people are still talking about uh, the Avengers movie. But the thread running through all of this as I look back on 2015 is, the, is that Kurt Russell made three movies, each of which is an amazing exhibition of how manly he can still be. So our menu is going to include Furious 7, Bone Tomahawk, and The Hateful Eight. Uh, the order of the films, because, you know, it's hard to uh, distinguish how manly Kurt is in one movie as opposed to another, so we're going to do the only sane thing and go in order of increasing facial hair awesomeness. And thus, we start with Furious 7, which admittedly may be a mistake in terms of uh, a movie party that you're putting on, because you're starting out pretty big. Furious 7 is really something. It is a movie that puts car stunts first and literally everything else like, you know, story, character, and plot second. The main plot is that Jason Statham, brother of Luke Evans' character from uh, Fast and Furious 6, or was it Fast? It was Fast 5? I think it was Fast and Furious 6? I guess, is out for revenge on Vin Diesel and his crew. And just as he was about to get ultimate revenge on Vin Diesel, in comes Kurt Russell playing a self-described nobody and an implied government spook, although I patiently wait for Fast and the Furious 8 and Kurt Russell's inevitable heel turn. Kurt Russell saves Vin's life and gives him a different, a slight variation on the mission, which is, uh, you know, you could just kill Jason Statham or you could go off on this ridiculous quest to get this device that will make it uh, easier to kill Jason Statham at your leisure. Uh, Vin Diesel's character, Dominic Toretto, not being the brightest, goes along with it and thus we have the movie. Kurt Russell, though, is just oozing super duper charm throughout the whole film because he's got a con Dominic Toretto who does not trust anybody or anything especially after you know being making friends with uh, Brian O'Connor the late Paul Walker as such he really is just wonderful he just Kurt just goes around being too cool for school and uh, fun fact he really is he's got like just a hideout, a headquarters with all sorts of resources, James Bond stuff. He's basically the American James Bond, or, you know, if they were to make a Felix Leiter movie, I would hope that this, it would somehow resemble this. And, you know, why aren't we making an aging Felix Leiter movie with, you know, Kurt Russell as Felix? This would be incredible. We could, you know, maybe pull Sean Connery out of retirement or something like that. Anyway, just spitball. Mainly, Kurt is a, a behind-the-scenes type of character, but we do get one really good action sequence where he goes, you know, full James Bond with, night, with super duper uh, night vision glasses, and he goes like two guns, sunglasses, all John Woo Chow Yun Fat style. He's just great throughout. I mean, the movie is just incredible. There is so much manliness on display, and the fact that like in the middle of this, you know, Kurt Russell just kind of bobs and weaves around everybody and just showing them all how it's done. Just perfect. Not a lot going on in uh, the facial hair arena. He does have really great slicked back hair. You know, I'm a fan of the style. Nothing going on here. And so even though this is the most bombastic, loud, and ridiculous movie on the triple feature, and normally I would save that to the end, and this is a, for the conceit, we're going to go with this one first. And then we're going to take a hard right turn with its polar opposite, Bone Tomahawk. Written and directed by S. Craig Zoller, a uh, writer that Kurt Russell loves. Kurt Russell, this was sort of a pet project for Kurt Russell. He got this thing made because, oh my god, it needed to get made. It was a western in which Kurt Russell plays a local sheriff whose town is beset upon by uh, cannibalistic Native Americans. They kidnap uh, uh, his deputy and Pat, the wife of uh, another character, Patrick Wilson. Uh, Kurt Russell, Patrick Wilson, Matthew Fox, and Richard Jenkins go out to rescue them. 
and it is amazing. It is a very steady paced movie, but don't let that fool you. That's just to lull you in so that you're completely unprepared for when the actual conflict happens towards the end, and it pays off brilliantly. Kurt Russell plays Sheriff Franklin Hunt. A lot is left for the audience to fill in, but my impression is that he is an older sheriff who used to work in a lot rougher towns, but is now in a, the town of this movie, Bright Hope, is sort of semi-retirement. It's supposed to be a quiet town where the most you have to deal with is a rowdy drunk, which he tends to deal with, uh, as it turns out, by shooting them in the leg, much to the dismay of uh, Patrick Wilson's doctor wife. Kurtz has a very controlled performance. It's not bombastic. It's definitely not Tombstone Kurt Russell. You know, you remember Tombstone, one of the manliest movies ever made. But every time Kurt speaks or does something, there's this weight of age and experience that doesn't take away from anything or make him appear weak. He's just, he's very focused on the job, does not have a lot of patience for any BS, but, you know, in a lot of different scenes, is shown to be a man of compassion and friends and friendliness. Bone Tomahawk is brilliant. I don't understand why it was not given a much wider release. Admittedly, yes, it's a crazy premise, crazy, crazy genre. To date, I can only think of one other movie that features cannibals in the Old West, and that's Ravenous, which coincidentally also featured David Arquette, as uh, does Bone Tomahawk. So David Arquette, you need to deliver on this for me. I need one more cannibal Wild West movie with you, and then we could have that triple feature, and oh my god, it would be insane. In the meantime, Bone Tomahawk, just brutal. It is tough. It is a movie about anticipation and anxiety that uh, goes along with it, and just danger everywhere, because, you know, at any moment, the cannibalistic uh, Native Americans could strike, but Patrick Wilson also has this broken leg, so at any moment his leg could break and everything could go all to hell, and just, oh my god. Uh, I don't want to tell you anything more about Bone Tomahawk, because you just, just track it down, watch it. I'm pretty sure it's on DVD and Blu-ray right now. You will not be sorry if you spend an afternoon with this movie. It is simply incredible. In terms of facial hair, uh, Sheriff Franklin Hunt has a very a uh, serious, expansive mustache, but as we're going to find out in, a, in another movie uh, in a, a minute, it is not as big a mustache as Kurt Russell can grow. Finally, we have the eighth film by Quentin Tarantino, The Hateful Eight. Not going to talk too much about this because it just came out in theaters and I don't want to spoil anything. It is everything you expect it to be, but like every other Quentin Tarantino movie, it is nothing like what you expect it to be, except that it's really could. In this one, Kurt Russell plays uh, not a sheriff, but a bounty hunter named John Ruth, the hangman. Because, you know, where other bounty hunters will just shoot you and deliver your dead carcass, when the hangman gets you, you hang. And he's uh, trying to transport his latest bounty, Daisy Domergu, played by an incredible Jennifer Jason Lee. She sort of steals the whole movie. Just, you know, if you go see it, Keep an eye on her in the background, because she's always doing something, and it's just fascinating. You could be nice and say that he is a product of his time, or you could be, you know, more honest and say he is a borderline misogynist. We don't know that he hates all women, but he hates Daisy and repeatedly beats the shit out of her to the point that it's very disconcerting. Although, on the other hand, he does seem to be vaguely progressive in terms of race, but, you know, only as much as the times would like let him be. But he is one of the titular Hateful Eight and one of our focal characters and just a really great foil for Sam Jackson's uh, Major Mark West Warren who, oh my god, Sam Jackson again in <laughs> Quentin Tarantino movies. It's just never a bad thing. But I would really love to see more Kurt and uh, Sam in movies together because they have just instant chemistry and oh, I can just imagine the buddy cop movie that they would get into. Kurt Russell's facial hair in this one, amazing. I mean, his mustache is wider than my head and I am not a skinny guy. It's just, it's amazing. And uh, apparently it's finally gotten, like he finally shaved it off and Goldie is very happy about this. But you know, in terms of, you know, us men everywhere, we can only just dream of having a, you know, expansive mustache that big. Oh my God. But 2015, Kurt Russell, 
manliness. Uh, Furious 7, Bone Tomahawk, and The Hateful Eight. Can't wait to see if he's going to actually pop up in the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie, because that would just make it that much better. But uh, looking forward to all of the movies in 2016. Uh, I think first and foremost, uh, the big excitement is either Hail Caesar or uh, Deadpool. So we'll see which one of those comes out first, and I'll see you guys next week.